Hello and welcome to the Career Wednesdays show. Today we are discussing building a career in an era of no jobs or job insecurity. We are all very well aware of the plague of unemployment and the seeming lack of jobs in Ghana and most parts of Africa. Our guest today is Dr. Jeff Bassi. He's the founder of Graduate Training Institute, which is a postgraduate management development institute that has trained and developed about 6,800 managers and corporate leaders in Africa, both from the private and public sectors. He's a lecturer and corporate trainer with key expertise in leadership, HR, and corporate strategy. He has consulted for several companies across Ghana and Africa, and is a faculty member of the West African Civil Society Institute, WACSI, and also a resource person for the Barack Obama Young African Leaders Initiative, YAD. <coughs> Jeff, you're welcome. Thank you. So with the topic we, we are going to be discussing, what are some of the key takeaways you want your audience to lead with? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, I, I want to say from the start that there is simply, um, it's not going to be, or well, we're not going to have job security in the very, very near future. Organizations are sharply looking at how they can cut down costs. Uh, they are looking at alternative work schedules that would get their jobs done, yet will not have, uh, if you like, an ongoing contract with um, uh, workers. In Ghana, the labor law <laughs> prefers that we be referred to an employee as a worker, um, ranging from um, telecommuting, where people are allowed to work from home, then also people working under what we call contract for services and under contract of service. Usually when you are under contract for services, you are more like an entrepreneur and rendering services to the organization at your own time, at your own pace and you determine the fee you charge. That way the organization avoids a lot of um, uh, you know, benefits that either to uh, responsibilities on the employer, i.e. Uh, questions of medical uh, leave management and all of that and by and large organizations are coming to the realization that uh, they can have better ways of managing their human resources um, coupled with the question of uh, the emergence of technology that is making things much easier for organizations to meet demands of customers okay. let's just jump right in tell us how do you build a career when there are no jobs. Beautiful. I think and have lived with this ideology for quite a long time that we always have given the wrong orientation to young people, particularly from school, uh, that the only way you have a job is to sit in somebody else's office and wait for salary to be paid to you at the end of the, the month. And anything outside of this doesn't make sense to the Ghanaian youth. Um, there's really a difference between a career and a job. Um, I tend to say that in course of your career, you may find yourself doing different jobs. There's actually even a difference between a, a profession and for that matter, uh, a career. You may be a professional lawyer, but you may spend the whole of your career as a legislator as a, uh, maybe the electoral commission or something and your profession becomes a necessary prerequisite to your survival in the chosen field of career. But as for a job, it's a singular thing you do at a specific point in time. So different jobs eventually will make one build up a complete career. And so that is keenly the difference. Uh, probably where we should be focusing our attention is whether people can still pursue a career without necessarily being offered a job by another person. And for me, that is the orientation I thought that was wrong with us. Uh, and it's a cultural issue. Um, you finish university and the expectation of the entire society is that you should have a job with either two big organizations and then um, if that wasn't the case you were not appreciated your own parents would think that they had wasted money and time 
by probably sending you to pursue higher education and uh, it has come to stay in our mind. So I, I tell young people that the first barrier to break if you want to pursue a career on your own without necessarily taking up a job with an organization, you have to first master the courage to break societal barrier, the expectations of society uh, on you. We can take various professions and discuss how to sort of uh, manage a career in, in those professions without necessarily uh, having to be uh, sit down uh, salary earner in that area. I'm not condemning salary, I, I still earn salary, but quite apart from that, there are uh, several ways we are able to render services to sometimes the very organization that will want to be paying you salary and then build up a career on your own other than locking up yourself and whenever there is question or there are questions of redundancy, people think that that is the end of the world. Then you touched in the beginning that job security is not uh, something you should be expecting in the next few years. So how should we look at that? Should you become afraid or how can you work around that knowing that maybe you're not secured in this job for a number of years? Well, it's quite inevitable and the fear I don't think will be the appropriate thing for us to focus on because whether you're afraid of it or not, it would come to pass. Now, I've heard in recent times several unions, uh, especially when the mining firms are changing their uh, style from maybe permanent engagement to contract staffing, uh, that the government should step in. Listen, the employer is the one that sets the operations of his business. And the employer says that I, I, there are certain aspects that human beings come to perform that are no longer relevant to the survival of this business, what the technical people call redundancy. It is not people we render redundant. It is jobs and roles that become redundant and for that matter, the occupants of those roles uh, would no more be needed in organization. But unfortunately, you find unions agitating and making all manner of noise. It wouldn't go in a way. I, I, the meaning of employment is let's create and share and I am saying, saying that I don't need your partnership in this creation anymore and so you have no reason why you should stay to be sharing. Um, um, I, I indicated already that we may not even be reducing the uh, amount of business and organization that say the banking sector for instance but they have found other means of doing that business. And uh, because of the sheer question of organizations wanting to, if you, may, if, you, if you may, for want of a composite word, reduce costs, are finding other means of doing things. So very soon, you are going to be on your own, sit in your bedroom, render a service to the organization. That which either to you that have created an office and a seat for you, render a service to the organization and still take your money. The only thing there is that you run the risk of uh, profit or loss. Uh, the profit can be in excess of your salary. Uh, the, the loss can also uh, mean that you are, you are worse off if you are working. Uh, but that is the world we, we are in now. It's a competitive world and nobody should look forward to uh, you know, having job security and a safe heaven. And uh, uh, once you are thrown in there, you are sure of a daily bread until the world comes to an end. Uh, really, the question of job security is dwindling every now and then. It's whether you are rendered, it's either you are rendered redundant or the organization says, we still want this service rendered to us, but we are going to outsource it. The question of uh, offshoring is also a great management strategy many organizations are adopting now. They are finding cheaper labor in other countries uh, much uh, more access to raw materials and so much as um, the job is still important it relocates the plant to another country still under the management of organization that's the difference between offshoring and outsourcing and every country uh, you know have their own blocks in Ghana here if you're a foreign investor and invest in my country 70% of the work workforce come to the Ghanaians so if, if Ghana should relocate uh, or a company in Ghana should relocate and plan to another country. Those countries also have their rules. We, we cannot match the old Ghanaian workers to those countries to go perform those rules. And the mere question of globalization, 
where uh, companies are using expatriates, where organizations are looking for uh, third country nationals. And today, uh, every job advert is actually online. I mean, graphic adverts are all online. What it means is that anybody is able to fly from any part of the world to any part, anything to compete for that job. Sometimes people people um, question the question of question the issue of um, uh, expatriate being expensive. Organizations are now doing what we call localization. They go for an expatriate and localize their contract with you. And because of lack of enough jobs, many foreign guys are accepting to be treated as though they were local nationals of the countries they work for. And all of these are uh, simply making it very difficult for anybody to go to bed thinking that that job you have will be yours for good. So then in the light of all of these developments, how do you as an individual, a student, or an entry-level staff in Ghana or in Africa, how do you um, prep yourself for these changes? How do you ensure that maybe you are able to put food on your table and still develop yourself? Yeah, I think that the question of entrepreneurial flair uh, or attribute is now a must right? because uh, a couple of years ago you engaged final year students in universities to talk about career issues and some of them will be bold enough to tell you, listen, I'm not an entrepreneur and I don't want to hear anything about how to build my own business. Uh, today is a necessary event, you have to go for it. I think that it is high time we started as a, a nation our educational systems started looking at um, maybe developing everybody in business management. I have ever heard uh, the good old professor uh, Stephen Ade uh, mention that uh, let's stop wasting first degree students' time with a lot of specializations uh, uh, and all of that. So get the, the student to be on top of his communication issues, his analysis, his calculus, and probably beyond that he can go for uh, some training. I want to add that the question of um, business management, small business management must be also um, a compulsory area for almost everybody to go to. I think that the question is that when people become professionals, you see, you can be a medical professional and you can be a medical entrepreneur, if you may, an educationist who is a professional and an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, sometimes people fear that once they go entrepreneurship, that aura of I'm a legal practitioner or a lawyer or a medical doctor will be taken off me. I mean, you run the hospital, you serve as the managing partner uh, or the, 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 man, the medical director of the So you, ask, you still have opportunity to practice your area. I will take myself as an example. I love to teach. And from the beginning, I was only interested in the university and engaging me to teach. So I thought that uh, I, I can start an educational center, postgraduate center. And really, I do not have the discipline sitting down in the office and administering the school. I always want to find myself in the classroom. So when I realized that you can bring on administrators, uh, you can play some role in administration and still, uh, uh, if you like, perform that which is you think that is your heart is so much after you want to uh, make, uh, uh, impart knowledge in the classroom uh, and whatnot. So I would, I would advocate that we do not confine students' knowledge anymore to only their professional areas. Uh, like I said, it's a wrong orientation. Somebody is a gifted cook, great caterer, goes to school to read marketing and thinks that uh, she must become a marketer instead of having the orientation of if you now have marketing skills, use it to market your company uh, much, much better. And if we can start changing the uh, orientations it would help. Let, let me say this one, it's a big one and a lot of people will be, be probably not be happy with this statement. I think that um, the whole educational system is so wrong that you have somebody have a first degree, probably goes for an field and gets a PhD and becomes an MBA lecturer to prepare to the managers to manage organization where he himself has never managed an organization. He's even teaching a program you never perceived. Like I mentioned, he didn't read a practical masters like MD, you read an academic, a research based masters like MFA, mm -hmm. gets a PhD, and is qualified to develop the next person. There are entrepreneurship lecturers in this country who have never managed their business before. And so the, the person is still going to preach the question of uh, get a job, and when you get a job, probably your job will be secured. 
and all of that. And I really, really, really want to call on the public sector the question of uh, giving employees the mindset of job security is no more because it's just a pretense. Some of the time they come to realize that we can reduce costs when people go home. But uh, the question of people cannot go home or how they go to is a reason sometimes cost of production for a lot of public or government owned organizations is much, much higher than whatever they produce. Okay, that's a lot of information to process. But I think the key thing that stands out is that there's, let me just say, there's no job security. Absolutely. It'd be better off if you're able to develop yourself and wherever you find yourself, you can actually make use of your skills to earn a living or so to say. So uh, let's move on to some of the questions we collated from the audience. The first one I think we've already answered because they are asking if job security is a realistic expectation in the modern era of the world of work. If you have answered that. And with the pace of growth and emergence of new jobs and careers, is it right to be focusing and educating the youth into specific jobs? I think you have handled this one as well. Yeah. We want to add something to Yes, it. let me add something little to read. We cannot totally do away with questions of specialization. Uh, instead, I, I got something freedom and confinement. Instead of getting uh, somebody into business management, you just focus on accounting, you can develop a person in terms of business management. Instead of probably getting people to focus on criminal law, the person can have a bit of the entirety of the law. So, what I'm saying is that we cannot say that uh, let's take away specializations. We can't run this world uh, because. There's too much to be learned and there is too much to deliver. And if you get everybody as a generalist, nothing would probably get done. But, but there are areas that we need to start getting generic business management questions, questions of uh, IT knowledge, which is simply intertwined with almost everything. Uh, there are organizations that are sharply collapsing their IT departments. And I know you should be surprised, probably. The reason they are collapsing is that the IT is itself is intertwined with every job already. And so, Rather than creating a unit and call it IT, they rather get IT aspects uh, into every department. So you are an HR professional with IT knowledge, or we employ an IT person who is not sitting in an IT department, but sitting in the HR department with you, an IT person who is a member of the finance department. Gradually, gradually, even that is going to get away because that's the way we work. It's like formally saying that you are in charge of this, but we'll get you. A literate and educated person to manage this for you. Now, the meaning of education itself means that you must have uh, knowledge in questions of information technology. I think most of the questions are things you've touched on. So, unless maybe you have something further to add to it, one says, Should we all become entrepreneurs to have a career? And then another is asking about the differences between a job and a career, which I think you made mention of in the beginning. And can I still have a career even without a job? So maybe you could mash up the three things. Right. Probably we would encourage everybody to have entrepreneurship flair, uh, but to say that every single one must have a uh, must must be an entrepreneur to think about job. I, I do not think you and officials are necessarily thinking about entrepreneurship. <laughs> so uh, it's not every single job that would be out of the system with mm -hmm. that, no. Uh, but uh, we are talking about the masses and okay? so you are better off uh, having yourself or having a backup uh, probably before you become obsolete or uh, that job is rendered redundant. Um, and again, I also mentioned that I don't know whether to call it intrapreneurship instead where you are actually with an organization but your services is what is directly paying you the organization puts you under what we call contract for services. Uh, I don't know what to go too technical or too deep, that is why I didn't explain much. Many organizations are moving from the contract of service, which locks them down, which gives them what we call vicarious liability. The employer is held for the, for the actions and inactions of the employee in every facet. The organizations are moving away to uh, uh, contract for services. And that way, the organization shares off a lot of benefit responsibilities and shares off questions of uh, vicarious liability. 
and what it does to meet the standards or expectations of the organization. So today, one of the areas organizations are not joking with or are not playing with in terms of training. I have a consultant, sometimes they engage you to come and run trainings for them. The recent topic they don't play with what we call uh, defender governance. When they have outsourced services to organizations, how do we still govern the organization? So the outsourced company is not under any duress to report to his office at 8 a.m. and close at 5, but rent that service and do it that way. But why would they be interested in governing the organization, the, the outsourced uh, firms? Uh, the reason is what we call unfair labor practices. And sometimes when outsourced organizations get themselves involved in, uh, in these infractions of fair labor practices and break their rules by the, the structure of our laws at the moment. It's not just the perpetrator for this, uh, in this case, the vendor. Both the vendor and the mother firm that outsource the service are jointly liable. So much as we are gradually moving away from contract of service where you are my employee, we rather give you the work, go and do it on your own pace. Just meet my standard. Uh, maybe if you want to play in between pure job security and questions of entrepreneurship, there is best to support it. Intrapreneurship. You are attached to an organization. Your revenue comes from the customers that do business with that organization, but you are practically vulnerable. What it means is that if you don't meet the standard, they will change you and give it to another person to render that service to them. So the person who is the outsourced or defender now looks at how many more people do I also need to get to get that organization done. Then with time you also find smarter way of doing it because of technology issues and start sharing off a lot of those people that are employed to help with the services. I think it looks to me like maybe we are probably getting into an era of freelance more as sex. opposed to having people sit directly in your Precisely so. Precisely so. The last question says, what particular values or ideologies should I hold on to in building a career? Let me finish it this way. When there is job insecurity right, or when there are no jobs? The, the first one, maybe let me mention some three. The first one I want to emphasize precisely would be uh, the question of value creation preceding wealth creation. Uh, too many a time our observation is that we the young guys are more interested in how much am I making from this and then sometimes it's, it doesn't help us in building the structures and the networks and the connectivity. I, 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 I have I've consulted for quite uh, over 100 organizations uh, at the starting end sometimes organizations engage you Oh, we just want you to come and have a chat with your staff at a, a, a staff meeting. And practically, sometimes they give you peanuts. But it gives you the opportunity to sell yourself to that organization. And the next time around, you have to run a training for them or they need your services in terms of consulting. You can now sit from me to chat. The first value I want to sell to young people who uh, would have to run their own businesses, and that is where we are going, whether you like it or not would be to focus on creation of value. Whether you are selling on retail basis or you are the lucky one out there who the organization wants to outsource services to and you may also engage the services of others. Those are quite big contracts. The focus should always be on how do I create value. Then naturally, naturally, uh, worth will follow because anybody who solves problems <laughs> should be rewarded. Uh -huh. uh, that, that would be the first area I would want to speak to. The question of professionalism and expertise is lacking in our society today. You find people who come in touch with information, call it knowledge, and they mistake themselves for experts. So that if you come in touch with information and you have knowledge, we would want you to take your time and uh, learn how to apply, learn how to do the analysis. The, the, the next one, I, I call it sentences. Having spent some time on that work for a while, you naturally gain some mastery that even though some research or lessons have been uncovered, then you're able to resolve problems for the organization. 
then you get to what we call evaluation. Evaluation is that, that is that stage that you are able to tell consequences of actions even before they are initiated. Then we can start calling you experts. I think let's take our time and give expertise. I am a typical example. I finished first degree accounting, back up with some ACCA, started calling myself chartered accountant. Indeed, I was chartered on paper. However, uh, I didn't know the work. And you have to attach yourself to a more experienced person uh, to build it up. Let me also say this one. I mentioned three, right? I said I was going to say three. So let me say this one as final. Right Indeed, there are many values to make success. But I think this is equally critical. The question of partnership is not a spirit that is in us. Everybody wants to go solo, so solo. And so we find ourselves doing a lot of small, small things. And we are unable to sometimes, if we have to choose a vendor, for instance, for the outsourcing that I talked about earlier on, we look at a lot of things, capacity and whatnot. If for nothing, let's look, let's look at what is happening in the banking center, where we Bank of Ghana is asking for a higher uh, capital requirement. And it's not for fun. It's for the bank so they can uh, manage or, or do what we call bigger deals, uh, bigger transactions. Uh, their letters of credit are normally weak and all of that. When you get to Nigeria, you have about 25 banks. So almost all the 25 banks can handle a lot of big deals. So what do we see? Apart from the uh, uh, Bank of Ghana, according to them, the fractions of certain banks and withdrawing their licenses, there are banks that haven't broken the banking rules but they are simply too small. But what do we hear? Very soon, very, very soon, in a couple of months' time, we'll see a lot of mergers. It's either you are reduced to a lower level, so say savings and loans, or you will merge. In other words, what I'm saying is that there is power in synergy. Let two young people who are struggling for a job or who have come to realize that there's no more job security say that. Let us come together. I'm going to focus on cost accounting, you focus on financial accounting, we're going to be the auditor and user and let's pull this thing together. And partnership will mean that as you contribute your quota and contribution of capital is not always cash. Somebody is riding a car and he doesn't have a job. You submit your car and that car becomes your share. It doesn't belong to you anymore. As we know the law that governs companies, it becomes artificial companies are artificial entities or human beings of their own, if you like. And that is your contribution. And that is the same thing that informs when we have to share profit. Like the, the good old saying, what is the use of having 100% of one compared to having 10% of a million? So why don't we, the synergy, the partnership, it helps us to uh, do bigger deals than going solo and uh, almost every uh, PD that we have to participate in, we lose out because you don't have capacity. Thank you. So the particular values or ideologies that we can pick are value creation, professionalism, expertise, and partnership. These four things are really important in this era. Okay, do you have any concluding words for the audience? I want to say that there's a, a powerful proverb. It says that when your anus is itching, and you are scratching your back at the end of the day you are the one who will suffer the consequences people are pretending that the question of job uh, is not a problem or jobs are and sometimes let me say this politicians add to the challenge they mount platforms and give or create the impression that they have the ability to create the job law it is actually not government's business to do business. Government only create the enabling environment to get a private man to succeed, survive, and pay in tax. Governments don't create jobs. They only create enablement or enabling environment for individuals to create jobs. That is how all the great countries are built, the Americas and all the rest. So let it, let me let me let me say to uh, our viewers that. Um, um, uh, this thing is not a question of pretext. There is no job security out there. And the, earlier we started looking at avenues of creating our own revenues and income. The better it will be for you as an individual, the better it will be collectively for us as a nation. Thank you very much, Dr. Basi, for making time for this discussion. And we are grateful to you, our viewers, for staying with us throughout the whole discussion. We hope you learned a lot from this discussion as usual if you have any further questions you can leave them in the comments 
will get them answered for you. Like the video, share, subscribe, and connect with us on social media through hashtag Career Wednesdays. Thank you.